No one will ever convince me that there's another sport that is as physical and as mentally demanding as fishing is. These kids get up. I know personally, I wake her up at 2.30 most mornings when we're headed. When I'm headed to the boat ramp, most of the time at 2.15 on Saturday morning, I'm waking her up, making sure she's up. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing in the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, Master Captain Angie Scott. All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. This is a, a super fun one. I'm sitting here right on the banks of uh, Percy Priest Lake, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. We've got the Truck Camper Mobile Podcast Studio here at uh, the Four Corners RV Park and uh, Resort. And uh, I really haven't done an episode like this in a while, I think, since uh, the last one I can remember where I had a bigger group was at the 2020 Nashville Boat Show. I had a lot of the late local lady anglers come out and we actually had a live audience, which was really cool. But this is, this is a great setting too. You know, we've been talking about high school fishing here on the podcast lately. We had, um, Gary Reddick, who's the coach of the Mount Juliet high school fishing team on recently to kind of talk about it. And, uh, there's still a lot of people that don't know that the high school fishing is a, a thing. And, uh, you know, and especially we're starting to see more and more young ladies getting involved. So I've got a handful of them here with me today and uh, just kind of want to talk about their experiences fishing in the junior and high school fishing, um, you know, and get kind of some insight on, you know, what kind of experiences they've had and uh, things that you've gotten out of fishing competitively. And I also have Jennifer Lassiter here, who's a director. Um, so maybe she'll give us a little insight from, from her point of view on that end of it as well. Um, but welcome, ladies. Thanks for coming out today. Yeah, thanks for having us. Absolutely. So, Morgan, I'll start with you. Um, tell us, just give us a little bit of background on when you got into fishing, how long you've been doing it. Um, you're graduated now, but... Uh, I'd love to hear, you know, you you did very well. I've been following you on social media and um, always impressed with uh, your skills. And, uh, yeah, just tell us a little bit about how you got into it. Yeah, so my brother, when I first started high school fishing, I was actually a senior and he was a freshman. So that's when we both got to fish together. And going into it, like, I definitely didn't realize how serious and how big of a sport it is. And as, like, a girl, I was nervous, like, oh, what if I'm going to be the only girl, you know? But you go, and you see girls at almost every tournament, and just going and being able to be a part of something like that is really cool. And like you said, the girls are definitely, it's becoming more popular, Mm -hmm. definitely the girls. And, you know, like I said, to any girls who are wanting to get out there, like, I would say definitely don't be nervous. Just, you know, everybody goes out there and does their thing. Everybody is so supportive of each other, and it's an awesome sport to be a part of. Well, one great thing about it, and Jennifer mentioned this earlier, we were talking about it just visiting before the podcast started, is it's it's fishing is a great equalizer in a way, you know, as far as competitive sports go. Um, the fish don't care if you're a boy or a girl. Right. So, right. yeah. So that is one great thing about it. And, uh, you know, one reason why I feel like it's important to get the word out uh, to get more young ladies involved in it because um i think just getting the word out and the more young ladies that see people like you uh and and these other ladies we have here with us um you know she can do it i can do it kind of a thing and so um well kudos to you for stepping up and getting out there and and doing it and uh what were some of your favorite like highlights I would say my favorite, you know, we fished all the opens. My favorite open was Saginaw Bay um, in Michigan just because, like, there's not a lot of bass fishermen down there. So it's just such a good fishery, (laughs) and there's so many bass down there. Um, And also, like, being able to go to nationals, that was definitely, like, a highlight. And, like, us, me and my – I fish with my brother, um, and us being able to fish together, like, just with my family. Like, we made so many memories that, you know, you'll never forget. It's great. Well, I want to talk to everybody here uh, a little bit more. So, you know, 
for people that don't really understand what all is involved with high school fishing, I mean, you, you travel a lot, right? Like, um, Jennifer, yeah. tell us a little bit about, I mean, give somebody kind of a picture of what they would expect if their kid wanted to participate. Well, um, the kids can definitely choose. And what I suggest when they come in as a junior angler um, is choose a trail. Tennessee is divided up in uh, four different trails, and, and the state opens, and they need to kind of choose for their first year where you don't burn them out and they kind of get their feet wet and figure out what they're doing and how far they want to take it because the sky's the limit. You can fish five tournaments a year or you can do as many as 20 or 30 if you're up for it, okay? So I like to see a junior come on and fish one trail and do well with that and then move up to the next level and, you know, decide to pick up on two trails and maybe the state opens. Uh, my daughter, Annie, she fishes uh, four trails and the state, all the state opens and then all the Bassmaster opens. So not just traveling the state of Tennessee, we travel the entire nation. This last year, she fished Saginaw Bay, Michigan, and then all the way to Harris Chain, Florida. Mm-hmm. So you can take it and do as small as you want, do five tournaments a year and compete and be, do very well local. Or you can expand that and go travel the entire nation and get to see lakes all over that you would have never experienced. So it's it's the sky's the limit. Wow. That's amazing to have all that opportunity to, to travel as a, a junior high schooler. Um, it's amazing. So, Amy, talk a little bit about that. Like, how do you balance school and getting to fish all these tournaments? Um, I went home school just last year. I did online school. Okay. That way I can fish whenever I want to. And I... I can also, like, stay on top of my schoolwork and get all of it done. So that's really nice to be able to go do. Sounds like living the dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. great she way to do it. She went private this last year because, you know, we travel so much. Yeah. And um, she was able to do that, and it, it helps a lot. But she's been fishing this makes how many years? Five. Five years. Five, five going on six. Yeah. So she fished a few years as a junior. And uh, kind of figured out what level she wanted to be at. And, um, you know, it's just it's a blessing to be able to make it happen and, and watch it with both of my kids personally. And then all of my, I, I count all of our kids. I've got thousands of kids. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> because I, I, if they fish with Tennessee Bass Nation, I, I count on, hey, there's, there's one of my girls especially. And it's good to see um, the confidence it builds in some of these little girls. You know, you see them and they come in and they're acute. They can fish as little as second grade, okay? You see the, the little tiniest second grader come in with her dad and her little buddy going fishing when they're that small. And then you take a look at one like Morgan that has been doing this, that has all the confidence in the world that can hop in that boat and put it on the trailer and not have to ask nobody about anything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they have it down. And a lot of these girls, by the time they come out of this program, I'm sorry, but they can load the boat, they can back the boat down the ramp, and they can do it better than a lot of grown men. And <laughs> myself, I'm, I'm very proud of that and the, the confidence it gives them because if they have this much confidence at this level and this now, it's only going to help them in everything later in life. So, Annie, what's some of the favorite places you've gotten to go fish? Oh, I would say one of my favorite places to go was Harris Chain in Florida. That was one of the best lakes I have ever been to. So, yeah, and well, you have you have a chain of like a few different lakes that you can go to. If you don't figure something out there, you can just go to the next one. It's a uh, it's different fishery from Percy Priest Lake, isn't it? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Very different. Lots of grass. Lots of grass, and you have tons of canals, alligators, and bolotes, and it's just crazy. And opportunities to catch some monster fish. Oh, yeah. There's a lot in there. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I've I've only gotten to fish the Harris chain twice, and I've yet to catch a fish there. (laughs) So I need some lessons. I went there... Four times, I okay. think. Four or five. Nice. But I love going there. What's your favorite technique to use on the Harris chain? Favorite technique there? Don't give away any of your secrets. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. I catch a lot of stuff or like a lot of bass on Jade last time okay. I went down there. That was 
crazy because nobody else was really throwing it last time we went up there. But that's probably one of the best things. That and wacky wanna... rig right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can't go wrong with the wacky rig, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Dora Canal, did you go down? down oh, yeah. There? Yeah, we Beautiful. went down the Dora Canal. Nice. Yeah, that's where uh, they film scenes from the movie The African Queen, which is a, a really old classic movie, but uh, kind of gives you an idea how picturesque that canal is. Yeah. Beautiful. Very cool. All right, well, we've got a couple of ladies here from the Sumner County High School Fishing Team, and Freedom Boat Club is a sponsor, so really proud to see uh, how you guys have been doing this year. Um, but we have Maggie and Gracie, and you fish as a team. Um, so are you are you one of the only all-female teams, or are there others? There's a couple all-female teams. Um, uh, how many would you say there probably is? There's only a few. I'd say four mm-hmm. statewide. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's four, probably about four all-female four teams. Okay. Um, we are the only female team from Sumner County. Yes. But only girls, period. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's that's what we're here for, hopefully getting the word out and getting some more young ladies involved. Um, so talk about fishing together as a team. You Do you have to kind of work together? I mean, are you, and you're both at the front of the boat pretty much, right? Or no? It depends. Okay. Um, yeah, we definitely have to work together a lot. You know, it's just one thing that is definitely it takes a lot of teamwork with fishing. You know, it's just... You always have to encourage each other too, and it's always great to have your partner there to encourage you. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of coordination as well. Like you have to anticipate what the other person's going to do. Like it's gotten to the point where I can tell if Gracie has a fish on her line and if she's about to catch one, yeah. and like I jump down and get the net, yeah, or vice versa. And like whenever you go to cast, you have to make sure the other person isn't casting, so you don't get in the line. Right. So it it definitely takes a lot of. It's not just very. It's not one-sided. Gotcha. So, so and, and for people that don't know, so there's two different levels. There's juniors, and then there's high school. And the rules and things are a little bit different between the two. Right. So, so high school, you're actually running the trolling motor, um, whereas in juniors, I think the, the captain can do that, right? Yes. Captain well, can help. Yeah. But it's, it's encouraged. It's encouraged. It's encouraged. It's encouraged. They go ahead as a junior and learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. But the captain can help them as juniors. Um, you've got children. Juniors is second grade to eighth grade. Okay. okay. So that encompasses a, a big, <laughs> wide <laughs> gap there. And, uh, you know, if they come in as a second grader, the second grader is not going to have the capability to do that. And the boat captain can help them. But, um, they're encouraged to learn to do it. That way, when they step up to the high school program, they've got it. Because as a high schooler, these girls can do anything on the, that they need to to keep both safe and be able to catch fish. They're all good at it. Awesome. So um, so for you ladies, what's, what's some of the highlights that you've gotten out of competitive fishing? I would say one of our favorite things on the boat is always just the memories that come from it. Um, <laughs> We goof, we goof around a lot. There's yeah. a lot of funny stories that come out of like, have to have fun. like days. Yes. <laughs> that is one thing with fishing is you always have to make sure you have fun or else it's just, yeah. you're just out there and it's not yeah. anything you love to do. It can be tough too. I mean, it's very mentally tough. Yeah. So I follow Gerald Swindle. I don't know if you follow him. He's a little bit of a goofball. Um, but he, he promotes positive mental attitude. Like he has bracelets that say PMA in, just to kind of try to remind you to keep a positive mental attitude when you're out there fishing, when it's a grind. And uh, I just fished a tournament in Georgia where my first day was a total grind. And I realized I'd forgotten to wear my bracelet that day. So I wore it the second day and I had a much better day. (laughs) So maybe it's a little bit of a good luck charm too. But yeah, definitely important to go out there and have fun and make memories. Um, so it's it's just uh, so amazing that you guys have this opportunity to participate in the sport and get to travel and make all those memories at such a young age. So um, just proud of all you ladies for getting out there and doing it. Um, so we're kind of at the end of the season here, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We have state next, okay. and that's June 2nd and 3rd. Okay, and so where is that? That is at Douglas Lake. Douglas, yeah. Douglas, okay. So. 
Have you fished Douglas Lake before? I have one year in state championships yeah. uh, in the juniors, but not much luck that year. But They had to qualify to get there this yeah. year. They did not just get a ticket to go to state championship. These girls had to qualify just like everybody else and earn the right to, to go. So they're going to get to go fish it against everybody well. How many boats will be in that one? 250. It's wow. Two. What's it like being out there with that many boats? Is that a challenge? Um, that's normally. How it's, many? So you're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> if there's not a lot, it honestly, if there's less, it's kind of weird. Really? Because you're used to having so many people. So I, I fished, or I was a captain, I should say, for one of the tournaments last year on Old Hickory. And, uh, and that was the biggest tournament I've ever participated in. Um, it was pretty impressive to see that many boats out there. Um, and the, the fact that everybody has to like get a captain, get a boat. I mean, that's gotta be challenging. Do you all have your own boats? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of our teams will have two boats. <laughs> you, you do better if you have a boat and a backup boat. Yeah. Right. You tear up so much wow. stuff. <laughs> and and then captains, even backup captains, you'll see, you know, if you have two partners, both dads captain, and then you'll have a couple uncles that have captain. Because if you're going every weekend, you know, it's not always going to work out where one person can always take right. them. Because it's a lot. And, I mean, you said something about it being mentally demanding. There is no other sport. No one will ever convince me that there's another sport that is as physical and as mentally demanding as fishing is. These kids get up. I know personally, I wake her up at 2.30 most mornings when we're headed. When I'm headed to the boat ramp, most of the time at 2.15 on Saturday morning, I'm waking her up, making sure she's up. Okay? So that day's starting, and you guys are probably what right right behind her, 2.30, 3 o'clock. They're getting up. They're getting their gear packed. They're getting their boat uncovered. And my big thing is these kids, they will get yelled at. <clears throat> if they get to the ramp and their boat's not ready and they're sitting in the truck asleep, no, no, no. Ma'am, that's not going to work. Or, sir, that's not going to work. This is not your daddy's tournament. This is your responsibility. You get your behind out of the boat or out of the truck. You get your boat ready and you have it ready for tournament. So they know they're to be prepared. You know, they're getting out there on the water and putting this boat in at 3 a.m. They're sitting out there waiting until daylight to blast off. Then they're standing for eight to nine hours fishing solid without sitting down, without sometimes even taking a break or getting to go to the bathroom, which is an issue with our girls. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, and then, you know, they come in and then they're still two or three hours getting to weigh in and getting to, if they won something, getting to accept their award. So a lot of times we're heading home around six o'clock, six thirty at night, and they've been going since two and three a.m. So it is physically and mentally demanding. (laughs) And that's something we didn't even really talk about, too, is you got that, but then you've got the weather. I mean, you can't control the conditions. So you might be out there and pouring down rain that entire time, freezing cold. Um, Yeah. How do you guys, how do you do it? You just get that mindset that this is we're going fishing today and... Yeah, most of the time we just have the mindset we're going to go, we're going to go catch fish. That's all of what we're out here for, no matter what the weather is. Sometimes keep fishing. the weather definitely like takes like the fun out of it, I guess, because it's a lot, especially with the rain, cold rain. It yeah. just, yeah, sometimes you're just like, okay, I'm done. But then you got to remember what the end goal is. Right. It's that competitive fire to push through and. Gear helps having the right equipment. (laughs) Yeah, sometimes you need multiple gear because one will just get too wet. There's a lot of companies that have stepped up and come up with ladies stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Morgan, now help me. What do you put rain gear in your? I wear AFCO because they do have the women's. Yeah, and Annie, yours. I have Strocker and AFCO. Okay. Yeah. And what do you two use? Uh, The Bass Pro. Bass Pro. Bone dry. Yeah. That's what I use. Too. I'm seeing more and more items geared towards women, and, and even like fitting fitting us where they don't have to go just buy men's small and hope it. You know, okay, we'll fold this up, and tuck this in, and hope it works. There's a lot of companies that are starting to cater to our girls and our ladies, and I love that personally. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you mentioned it, so let's talk about it because we've talked about it on this show a few times in the past. But going to the bathroom. <laughs> it's an issue it's a we, we all have <laughs> when you're out there for eight or nine hours. It's inevitable. Um, do you ladies drink a lot of water while you're out there? Do you kind of dehydrate a little bit? Like, what's your what's your strategy? I really don't. 
stop to take a break. I have a problem with doing that. Like, uh, my partners, they've all like sit down to take a break and do whatever they want to do, but I don't stop the whole day. So my boat captain will have to tell me, sit down, you need something to drink or (laughs) eat. But most of the time, if I'm going to drink or eat something, I'll eat it while I'm going down the lake. Yeah. So if you don't have that bait in the water, you're not going to catch a fish, right? Right. (laughs) So, Morgan, have you had any issues with having to go to the bathroom while you've been out there? No, like like I said, like, yeah, there is not a lot of time to take breaks and drink water when you really should. But honestly, like, I don't know about y'all, but, like, you really just, like, if you don't have fish, just go in the love. (laughs) you know and if you do have fish then you just kind of figure something else out right. you know just make something work <laughs> what's y'all's favorite bathroom everybody's got a potty story <laughs> <laughs> um we've had to pull up to the bank before yeah. jump off go yeah. by the tree you know just make it work yeah it was a nice tree though <laughs> I know we had I had one uh, junior angler last year they had come off their spot like they were on fish and she had to go to the bathroom and she, okay I'm about to die I'll take me somewhere and they went to the bank and they another boat come in and was on their spot when they got back oh, no. yeah. and that little girl come in so oh. mad she's like that will never happen to me again I will never allow that to happen again <laughs> I was like yeah but you have to stay hydrated and, and think outside the box a lot some of our girls carry uh, a mason jar and a wet wipe, mm. okay, and a rain poncho, little bitty dollar rain poncho that's covered, colored, and uh, they get in the bottom of the boat and they'll use that mason jar when they, you know, put the boat captain and the partner on the front of the boat. If you turn around, you're going for a swim, <laughs> 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 and they will put their little rain poncho on and go to the bathroom and seal their jar up and continue on. It's to each their own, and then some get off and go on the bank, which kind of worries me because snakes. Right yeah, now. Okay. And then we had one angler who found what we thought was a moonshine steel on a local lake. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, if, if you see something strange, you just want to turn and walk away and watch <laughs> for snakes if you do have to get off the boat. So yeah. um, it's definitely a challenge. But with the weather warming up, y'all need to think about with Douglas, we need to do stay hydrated because we don't want anybody falling out on the boat. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Summertime, heat. Yeah, this is a challenge too. What would you prefer, the freezing cold rain or the heat? Probably the heat. I yeah. don't like the rain. I don't like the cold. Yeah. It's just yeah. a combination probably, probably of the heat. Heat. I would definitely. <laughs> it's like cold. Just I, do. Just I would do. I would do the rain. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? I guess. Yeah. I mean, at least you be cool. No, oh, like <laughs> hot, but with rain. Warmer with rain. No, because it'd be humid. Wait, you want cold <laughs> rain? Yeah. No, I can't cold. Outside. I hate <laughs> the cold. Well, I, my thought is if it's hot out, at least you've got, you're surrounded by water so you can, you know, kind of cool off somewhat yeah. anyway. Yeah, but during tournaments, you're not allowed to get in the water. Yeah. That's the hard part. <laughs> it's so tempting though. Hell yeah. <laughs> Practice. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will be rooting for you ladies next week. Are you excited? Yes, yes. ma'am. Yes, awesome. ma'am. Tennessee Bass Nation is the largest high school fishing organization in the nation. Wow. And I think one reason we are more successful than most places is you think about the diversity. Our anglers grow up. These girls have fished Tennessee River System. They have fished Dale Hollow Lake. They have fished all different. This, uh, what, last month they went to Ashland City and fished the Cumberland River. Okay, they're, they're prepared when yeah. they, straight off the rip, when they come out of high school, they're prepared to go as take it to the next level if they want to as college anglers they've already seen a lot of it and uh, they're not going to run into a lot of bodies of water that's going to intimidate them because they've been on something like that before and experienced it and figured it out so um, I'm proud of all of them I feel like these girls if they can compete in Tennessee and be competitive they can go anywhere and hold their own with any body of adult anglers do you ladies plan on carrying it forward after you yeah. With high school, yeah. What about you? I haven't run it. Yeah. It happens, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, very good. Well, thank you all for coming out this afternoon. Glad we had a, a beautiful day. And uh, hopefully some uh, other young ladies will hear this and be inspired by you and uh, want to get involved in, in fishing in school. Mm-hmm.